Kim here, Abundant Life Tarot. Thank you so much for joining me. We are doing a video tag, the Haunted Tag. This was created and started by Lila from Tapestry of the Unseen. And her channel, Lila's channel's video will be in my description box of this video. Check it out. I really enjoyed watching her video and the prompts that she created. So I'm going to take this opportunity to do a VR to her video and if I'm a little tired or my voice is a little raspy it's because I've been talking all day um, and I'm really tired so I yeah but I wanted to get this done especially before Halloween and especially before I do one more reading before I go to bed so here we are I'm taking a little break and the break is doing something fun like a VR all right let's get to it all right, so let's dig into these seven haunted questions, starting with number one, which is brew. What's your go-to deck for brewing up some magic and mystery in your readings? Oh, there's so many to choose from, and it's really sometimes very difficult for me to choose one particular deck, but I have just a few go-to decks. And this time of year, I'm always going to the slow tarot. Those who know me um, know I, when I love a deck, I love, love a deck. And I will work with it, work with it. And usually between like late August, early September to probably about January, I'm using this deck nonstop for readings for myself and especially readings for clients. The Witch's Brew, this is showing off your deck that always seems to stir the cauldron of intuition. And hands down, it's the slow tarot for me. And I'll share with you some of the cards and why it triggers my intuition. Even after all this time, all these years of me ha owning this deck, I've owned it since, does it say here? 2019. Yes, you know, the edges are a little uh, are a little banged up, but the deck is still great. I could be away from the deck for most of the year, and it reads so beautifully. Here's the Ace of Cups. It just speaks to me. I don't have to... I don't have to struggle to like try to interpret what I'm seeing or feeling when I'm in using these cards. It, they just deliver and speak to me so clearly. I love the artwork. I mean, this is quality art in my opinion. An artist did this deck, Lacey Bryant. And I think one of the reasons why I was called to work with this deck or back the deck back like when it, that's being kickstarted is this is balance traditionally justice is because the artist is from the Bay Area in California and I'm from the Bay Area and that mattered to me at the time and it just I felt like if this artist is from my home or near my home like she gets certain things, if you know what I mean. Probably doesn't even matter, but in my heart of hearts, it did. And let me tell you, the readings just flow. It doesn't matter if I am working the hotlines, if I am doing a private client reading through Etsy or my website or in-person reading or just a reading for myself. This deck just conjures up all sorts of intuitive hits. Here's the Ten of Swords. I've recommended it over the years and people who get it, for the most part, love it as much as I do. So, Witch's Brew. This is my go-to tech deck, tech, tech for brewing up some magic and mystery in my readings, always. Here's Seven of Coins. And it's a well-rounded deck. I can use it in career, love, mystery, mystic type readings, and I have. Um, I've used it in all sorts of readings and it just, I, I could just relax into the, doing the reading without like, oh, that panic of like, what is, what is that? Like it threw me off that image or that keyword or something. No, not with this, not with this. 
I'm such a huge fan of that Five of Cups. Can you see that? Let's see if I can show you some more. Here's the High Priestess. You know, a lot of people are really, you know, already tired of like artificial intelligence or AI decks. And one thing you don't get with this one is that you get actual artistry with this deck. And that too inspires and triggers the intuition. Not to say that, you know, I'm not knocking people who are making or using AI decks, by the way, but I think all of these things is what's in that cauldron of intuition for me that makes this deck just work. Just work year over year, autumn over autumn, time after time. All right, let's move on to the next question. Number two, the ghost deck. Which deck haunts your collection but rarely is used? Wow. Okay, so I had to go with the stretch tarot. I had to go with the stretch. And there's a 10 of swords. I've owned this deck a long time. I will put in the description box the link to the unboxing I did. I think it was one of the first videos I ever made on the channel. And yeah, <laughs> but don't judge me. But it, but it is one of my oldest and dearest decks. And one of my indie decks, you know, that I first was like, I'm, I'm going to get an indie deck. And this was it. I edged it. And I loved on it. I used it all the time when I first got it. Let's look at some of these cards. And before we get into the cards, number two says the ghost deck. Which deck haunts your collection but rarely gets used? A deck that sits quietly in your collection yet has spooky charm all on its own. And I've had it a long time. And when I use it, it always amazes me about the depth and the quality of the reading experience that I get. Ten of Swords. There's Five of Wands. It's collage style. And it has keywords at the top. So the Ten of Swords up here, that top keyword says Ruin. Here's Five of Wands, Strife. Emotion for Queen of Cups. The Hermit. Oh, I love that Hermit card. Okay, let's look at a couple more. Let's see. Two of Swords, it says Conflict. I've felt called to work with this one this month in October that I'm recording this video. Um, and it's a deck that's like, oh, I'll forget that it's there, but it's always there. I know I can count on it and, you know, that it'll be on the shelf. I go to it, do some readings with it and happy I did. It's just not going anywhere. I would never dream of trying to sell it or trade it or do anything with it. It's going to stay and haunt my shelf. Here is the, let's see what we got. Four of Wands, Completion. Here's the World. Here's the Empress. King of Cups has Reliability on it. Hmm. This is a Nine of Swords and it has the keyword Cruelty. Let's see, Four of Pentacles, which says Power. It's like old photos. And I've, you know, I've just really am enjoying working with it again after all this time. We have Six of Pentacles. It says Generosity. Hmm. All right, 
Nine of Wands, Strength. Here's the star. I love, love, love the Four of Swords. It says rest. And um, it shows hospital beds. So it, the infirmary keyword comes, to infirmary, infirmary, like hospital, right? That comes to mind. That's one of the keywords for the Four of Swords. So I love that. I love that that four of swords for that purpose here is the lovers so as you can see i'm quite smitten by this deck here's one of the magicians i believe there's two magicians in this deck but we're not going to worry about finding it at this time here's page of cups we have in inspiration Every single card is like a delightful journey to go into because your eyes can land on different symbolism, the images themselves, what the person is doing, or their facial expressions, or the key words, or our understanding of the, of the tarot meanings. I just love the stretch tarot so, so, so much, and I have for so many years. There's temperance, and one more. Here's the sun. So that's the stretch tarot. Let me know if you know about any of the decks I mentioned today. Do you have them? What do you think about them? And also, if you are up for it, do the tag. I'd love to watch your videos. And if you're not up to recording a video, that's understandable. You can just leave a comment and share you know, I'll leave the prompts in the description box so you can answer them in the comment section. How about that? How about that? Number three. Number three is Full Moon Madness. Which deck drives you wild with excitement when reading Under the Moonlight? Share the deck that makes you feel powerful and connected under the full moon's glow. And for me, that would be the Afro Tarot by Jesse Jumanji. I've also owned this one a good while. Can't quite remember. I don't know if it's going to tell me in this little booklet of when it was printed. Probably not, but that's okay. Um, I love this deck because when I work with it, I feel like it's ancestral, like going home. It's one of those decks that feels like going home for me. And you'll see why in a moment. And it, it just feels so ancestral. And for me, being a part of the diaspora, the you know, my lineage is from primarily Western Africa. And that, you know... We'll, I'll show you some cards in a moment. So there's that aspect of my ancestral lineage. And then there's the ancestral lineage of the family that had been in the United States in the South for hundreds of years. And so there's that ancestral energy. And this deck speaks to my African roots. Okay. Sometimes we just want to go home, right? We have the Eight of Wands. Here's the card backs. Okay. <sighs> Nine of cups. Sucking on his two middle fingers. Ten of swords. Seven of cups. The sun. The lovers. I'm ready to do a little magic, a little moon ritual work. I, I would go to this deck, especially not just moon ritual work, but tied to ancestral work as well. This is one of the very few decks that I go to for that purpose. 
Six of Wands. Here's the Hierophant. Here's the Magician. we have. Here's the Knight of Cups. Eight of Cups. It's a gorgeous Eight of Cups. You see that moon there? Yes. So a couple more. Page of Pentacles. Here's the Tower. I can just rest in the readings, if you will. That's another deck I can just be like, oh, I'm at home when I do these readings. It, am I always grabbing for this deck for client readings? Not so much. Every blue moon I'm called to work with clients with or work with this deck for client readings. But mostly this is a deck that I use for myself because I do have those decks in my collection still. Four of Wands. Here's three of swords, and we'll stop there. So that is the Afro Tarot. Okay, so now we are at number four, the Skeleton Key. Which deck unlocked a deeper understanding of Tarot for you? This is the deck that helped you unlock new layers of Tarot wisdom and insight. And for me, that would be the Hoodoo Tarot. This one. Right here. Right here. Now, remember how I was saying with the last one, with the Afro Tarot, like there is my ancestral lineage of my African roots, right? Uh, there's a deck that I want to tap into those ancestral energies. But then there's also... Once we made the huge long trek across the Atlantic to the United States, you know, there's my people have been in the United States for, you know, a long time. So I don't know, I don't even have to re rehash that. But I wanted a deck that spoke to those ancestors and spoke to my family and spoke to me in a way that just clicks and makes sense. And when the hoodoo was first on the scene, before it even was released, I just jumped for joy inside because I knew this was the deck that was going to literally feel like coming home. You all know what I mean when I say that. It literally feels like I've come home, I burst through the front door, family's bustling about, dinner is cooking on the stove, you can smell the smells. You feel the love. There's lots of animated talking and laughter. There's sadness. There's all these different things depicted here in this deck. And it, I ended up doing a tarot study. Uh, many of you were a part of that tarot study a few years back with the Hoodoo Tarot. It was the deck we were studying. Many of you still watch those videos I put out. I made a whole video playlist on the majors and going through the cards of the Hoodoo Tarot. If you're curious about it, I'll try to remember to put it in the description box, a link to the playlist so you can see the videos where I go in depth. Also, I'll put a link for the unboxing or a flip through of this deck. But look, here's the card backs. Literally has keys. The skeleton key, right? Didn't I didn't plan for that. But the hoodoo unlocked something. I think it was because, for a number of reasons, because of the imagery. Let's go through some of the cards. The guidebook. Here's Tina Bass. This is what I was talking about, that family, big family atmosphere. My peoples on both my mom and dad's side live in Mississippi, rural Mississippi. And... That's where they moved or migrated from Mississippi to California, where I was born. But I spent, you know, many a summer in the South, in the United States. 
and it was good times. Here's 10 of baskets, which is 10 of cups. So it's got the sepia color that I love, but I think it was the connection and studying this deck. And we all were going through some things when we were doing this tarot study. I missed during the group collective tarot study, and I'm, I'm toying with the idea of doing something smaller scale and getting back together again for a deck study. We'll see. But um, it was that. And, and so I really started getting into ancestral veneration. And this was the deck that my ancestors, my more recent ancestors, um, you know, in the United States ancestors, they wanted, they were okay with me using this deck. And I think it was because there's scriptures in the guidebook that I could refer to. It's a great guidebook, too, by the way. It's got journal prompts, and it's just really a great book, in my opinion. Great deck, great guidebook. But I have been working with the deck for a few years, and then I moved to... I moved abroad. I moved out of the country. And this deck was what I decided to do a tarot study that year in 2021. And whoa, every one of the members who were pitching in or doing the tarot study, if you are one of the original ones who did the tarot study, and you remember, let me know in the comments section. Um, Give me give a shout out because we had such an amazing time, a healing time. Here's John Horse. This is here we go. The Emperor. Two of Coins. We had such an amazing time. So to circle back to number four, the skeleton key, which deck unlocked a deeper understanding of tarot for you? It's this one. And it's for all the reasons that I said. I felt like I got to know this deck inside and out through my ancestral veneration work and especially through the tarot study. Ancestors is death. It's the death card. Okay. Here's Ten of Coins, another good big family card. I was hoping Big Mama would be right here. Um, oh, I love this. The grandchildren. Yeah. I was hoping Big Mama. Here's Big Queen. Because she has a big plate of cornbread. I should have had the... the card ready but um, also it just had people depicted that look like me look like my family and it's nice to see yourself represented so I won't go through all the cards and I won't keep gushing but yeah that is my skeleton key deck that unlocked so much more to how I can work and study and explore Tarot and how far it could go in terms of interpretation. That was through the Hoodoo Tarot. So now we're at number five, the Trickster. Which deck has surprised you the most with its tricky or unexpected readings? Oh my gosh, hands down, hands down is the new Error Elements Tarot. <laughs> It never ceases to amaze me just how far I can take this deck in terms of readings and the types of readings that I've done with it. I have done the, a reading on the Titan Submersible. Remember the Titan Submersible that had the unfortunate implosion? I think it was a year ago or it's been a year or two years. I don't know. But, okay, this is a very disturbing devil card, but it is what it is. I'm going to show it to you. Just give me a warning. But... This deck I usually use for mysterious types of readings, but I've also used it for, um, you know, not celebrity readings, but I've used it for all types of readings. And it just gives me meanings that only it can do. It's modern enough, modern, you know, the artwork that 
I see the scenes and they talk to me like these modern scenes and they talk to me in a way that then I can convey that information more clearly in readings like mysterious types of readings when I use the new era elements to row or when we were doing the Titan submersible. That's one that comes top of mind. Um, I'm trying to think of other readings aside from like true crime readings, but there have been many others and it just delights. I think I used this, oh, in flight, um, the Malaysia flight crash. I did a whole video series on that. And this was the tarot deck that I used. And it was uncanny and trippy on some of the nuances and things it picked up on. I, I just was blown away by it, the death card. So this would be definitely my trickster deck. It surprised me. I didn't know how to work with this deck when I first got it many years ago. I I was a little worried because there was a lot of affronting cards in it. And we talk a lot about this deck because I'm always doing certain kinds of readings with it. So you all inevitably will see me working with it a, a lot. So I talk about it, but I didn't know. And But something told me to keep it around and that I would be grateful that I did. I did a long time ago use it in client readings, but because of some of the cards, I felt it best to refrain from using it for, you know, like like clients who are new to me. I, I'm like, let me refrain. I don't know if that's where you belong. You are my little rebel deck. OK, and that's OK. You can be my rebel deck. So, oh, here's the full. And finally, we'll stop at the Hermit. I will put a, a link in the description box for a full flip through of this deck in case you are curious and you've never heard me talk about it before. But chances are, if you've been on my channel a while, you have heard me talk about it. So number six is Black Cat's Curiosity. What's the spookiest or strangest tarot reading you've ever done with the deck? Share a reading that gave you chills or just left you feeling a little spooked. All right. I'm going to share one with you. There's been a couple, not too many spook me. I mean, shoot, I do true crime reading. So those alone sometimes spook me. But the one that spooked me the most and had me feeling raw with emotion was the reading I did following a very close dear friend of mine passing, Albert. And I've talked about Albert before because when I was getting into cardomancy, getting into reading cards, he got a kick out of it. He was super supportive. He would want me to pull a card or two for him. Um, we worked together. Uh, we worked for an insurance company together for many years, and we were the best of friends. But Albert was dealing with a lot of challenges. He um, was dealing with alcoholism, and he was gay, but he didn't fully come out. And you would think, okay, during that time, it would be safe, but he was part of a generation and working for an, a conservative type of industry that he didn't feel it safe to come out as gay or and he struggled with that even though our us friend group we loved albert we adored him but at work he always felt like he had to dim himself and also he was from a um like his extended family was very conservative mexican um, roots and so he just always felt like he had to dim his light and he was really struggling in life and you know at work in his relationship and he asked me to do a, a pull some cards for him and I for some reason in my gut I was like I really don't want to pull cards today for you I don't know why I just was like I could feel it feel it like a resistance I don't normally get a resistance if somebody says oh can you pull a card for me normally I'm like yeah sure but there was a strong resistance that never came over me before and 
I'm shuffling. I'm shuffling, shuffling, shuffling as I do. As I do. And the most darkest of dark messages were coming through. I got the Ten of Swords, Three of Swords, Death Card, um, the Tower. All of them came out. All of them jumped. And then I tried to shuffle again and another one would come out and another and another. And I just remember feeling going cold. And I remember um, the look on his face. And um, he was like, that's not good, huh? He's like, I don't, he knew, he didn't know how to read cards, but he just enjoyed that I would do this for him from time to time at work. And I said, oh no, it's just, you're about to go through some changes. You're about to leave this company and go to a new company. He's like, no, 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 no. You're not telling me the whole story. And it spooked me because I wasn't, oh, the dog is howling. Oh my gosh, she never howls. She never, ever howls. Did you hear that? <sighs> Albert. Um, and I, I remember going home, going home from work that day and just not, just not being at peace, couldn't sleep, didn't feel right. And he moved on. He left the company that we had been working at for like a decade together. And he didn't do very well. He went fast. His, you know, organs were not doing well with all the drinking he was doing it. At 44, the age I'm at today, he passed away suddenly. And it was one of our friends and co-workers who got scared because he wasn't answering his calls. And that's not like Albert at all. So she went over there and found him. And it was just devastating. It was devastating. We were so close. And it broke my heart. And I, oh, I get emotional. So that part was super spooky, right? And after we go to the funeral, go through all of that, about a, about a few weeks later, I was like, I think I'm ready to do another reading and just ask him, how is he doing now? How is he doing now? Can he tell me? on the other side and another thing that was really cool about me and Albert we were so close we had promised that if one of us went first on the other and we would be on the other side we would always stay connected we'd all, I, I'm like I'm gonna haunt you and I, I expect you to do the same to me and we always promised that so there would always be these little signs little nudges that he's around and this card came up when I wanted to know how he was doing because he basically had acute um, alcohol poisoning as the cause, the official cause of death. And I got this card, the full. You see that rainbow? You see him leaping? He was communicating with me. He's more than okay. He leapt into the unknown and it was scary. But this is where he's at and this is where he feels the most free and look at the rainbow this is a man who felt like he had to keep certain aspects of himself to himself he couldn't live out loud even in california he couldn't and for so long he had suppressed that through drinking and numbing and and pretending like he's a flirt with women when he's really you know he's gay and then he got and then this card came and I wept like a baby and I got peace. I felt so much guilt, you guys, after I did that reading. I didn't want to do readings for a while after those cards came up for him. And I had promised myself I am not going to be doing a lot of readings for loved ones and friends much longer. I do them from time to time, but my policy is now getting to a point where I'm like, you just need to buy a reading from my friend down, down the way. I've got plenty of reader friends who can do a fabulous reading for you. I don't like doing readings for friends and family if I can help it now. And it's one of the reasons is because of Albert. So there you have it. There you have it. So that is... 
My number six, Black Cat's Curiosity. A little story time for you in the midst of this. And you're probably saying, well, what deck is this? This deck was another deck that he enjoyed um, that I used. It was the Numinous Tarot. I think this is the first edition, Numinous Tarot. And yeah, I had a poster um, when you I backed this deck or got this deck. Um, you can get like, you know, the bonus little, what do you call them? I forgot, rewards or something. And I got a full size, full card, like poster. And it, it's of this. And I love it absolutely positively love it and every time I look at it I think of Albert and I say hi every time I'm like getting too serious I hear his voice like if you don't let's go out he was that was always this thing let's go out let's go do something let's go for a drive let's go for a drink let's go let's go let's go let's have fun come on the work will be here tomorrow let's go and then I we go and, um, yeah, that's the world. Here's Awakening. It's a great that deck. This is another one I used a lot when I first got it, a lot. And now I'm holding it in my hand. I feel inspired to use it again. I feel like it's one of my summertime decks, but, you know, I live in the Caribbean. I can use this anytime. <laughs> So yeah, that's my story time with number six, the black cat, curi black cat's curiosity. All right, friends, last but not least, number seven, we made it, the pumpkin patch pick. Which tarot deck would you choose to accompany you on a spooky Halloween night or adventure? Your trusty deck for an, any eerie or mystical Halloween exploration. Hands down, for show, it is the Bohemian Gothic Tarot. This baby comes out all the time this time of year. Like every year on the dot, she, we're bonded. We're, we're hanging. And this year is no exception. I've been enjoying working with this deck. And um, if you've been hanging out with me for the last month or so, like in lives, you'll know like, I've, I've been feeling my, my bohemian gothic. It it just is super Halloweenish, right? It just is. I won't bore you all with let me let me see if I can find some. There's ten of cups. Let me see if I can find some images I haven't shown in a while. Nine of Pentacles. There's one of the lovers. I think the other one actually shows um, the vampire biting her, if my memory serves me correct. I'm hoping to find it, but we'll see. Here is the Three of Swords. Look at the bird. Looks like it's bleeding. And she's looking quite morose. Yeah. Here's the Five of Pentacles. I'm so in love with this damn deck. I'm just in love with it. Nine of Swords. One of my favorite nine of swords and super Halloweenish. Definitely would be that one if like people were like, oh, we're having a Halloween party. Can you do a few readings for us? This would be the one I would bring for sure. Card backs. Let's see if there's any of my other favorite favorite cards in here. I will see. Here's the Hanged Man. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Ah, here's the other lovers I was talking about. See, it is a vampire. 
Ah, give me your blood. <laughs> Strength. Okay. Mm, King of Cups, another vampire. So yeah, that would be my deck. That would be my deck, and I love this tower. Love, love, love the tower. So, yeah. That's what we got. What we got, friends. So we got through our seven haunted questions with this tag video, the haunted tag videos. And I can't wait to hear from you all in the comment section on the decks that I've shared and why I picked those decks. And I want to hear from you. If you are not called to record a video, that's a-okay. Leave a comment and just, you know, put quick little answers to or go in depth go in depth as much as you like you know the comment section I, it has a very long um like what is it word count have at it go, type away because i want to read these comments i'm curious to see what comes up for you but if you do a video and i hope you do leave a link so i know to check it out or tag me so i know to check it out you know, I'm at AbundantLife to row dot, or not dot com. That is my email, but I'm at Abundant Life to row, you know, the at sign, and you can tag me um, as well. And also use the hashtag haunted tag so that way it's all linked up when people decide to start typing in and looking for this particular tag to do. All right, friends, do me a favor on your way out. I would much appreciate it if you hit the like button and subscribe to the channel your support means so much to me i have to tell you i thank you so much and you have yourselves a wonderful end of october a beautiful new beginning of november much love so many blessings to all of you bye for now